Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Valentin and in today's video I decided to do a quick update on the current market trends and uh, just give you some information about uh, what are some of the best sectors to go into right now to maximize your profits and what are some of the sectors that you should avoid in the future. So to do that, I have the Markets tab open from Webull app. If you haven't seen this before, please check out my previous videos on my channel. I've used it a few times. It's a free investment app that you can download from the App Store. I believe it's both for Android and uh, iPhone users. So I have the United States tab open because that's where all the cool important news are. And uh, the first thing I'd like to address is the uh, plunge in NASDAQ that's been um, uh, sort of that we've witnessed in the past two or three weeks. For those who don't know what the NASDAQ is, it's basically a major index that's been tracked over here, as we can see, and it's composed of financials, technology, biotech, uh, and other healthcare companies, and a few others. But the most important thing is that about 47% of it is composed of tech companies. And so why did the NASDAQ drop significantly starting, I think, the 17th all the way to the 5th of March, and then it, it uh, quickly started recovering after? Well... To put it in simple terms, I'm just going to have to give you a little bit of introductory information of the current uh, sort of um, situation with interest rates. So in the financial world or in the investment world, um, every single stock is, well, the, the performance of a stock is compared against something that's called the 10-year Treasury, U.S. Treasury note. And what that is, is basically like a bond. It's a debt instrument for the United States government. And... Typically, the rates of these 10-year uh, treasury notes have been very low. However, in the past two weeks, we've seen a huge increase from 0.9 to, I believe, 1.5% in two weeks. So uh, what exactly does that mean? Well, uh, currently in 2021, we have um, massive vaccinations occurring all over the world and economies are slowly recovering. And what this means is a potential increase in interest rates and a potential increase in inflation. And when we have an increase in inflation, what that means is companies are less likely to borrow money. So if they're less likely to borrow money, um, the, the growth isn't as sort of um, eccentric, as accentuated as we would typically see in the low interest rate environment. So people are less likely to invest in stocks and they move towards bonds like this, um, which, which have higher yields. So um, in this situation, the tech stocks have some of the highest price to earnings ratios. And what that means is people are sort of, they're willing to pay more money for every dollar of the company's revenue because they, they expect sort of future earnings to, to increase for these companies. They have a lot of faith. But that's in a situation with low interest rates. When you have high interest rates, people are less likely to invest in these types of companies. And they're looking for towards, for example, the, these treasury um, bonds to, to make sort of like a, for safer investments. So that's why the tech industry um, uh, experienced this major drop in the past two weeks because of the rise of um the treasury the 10 year treasury bond yield rates was very quick and unexpected and that was um as a result of fears of inflation now if you can look into this it turns out it was a very short lived sentiment because the um the interest rates the united states government has promised to maintain the interest rates low for quite a bit longer and the markets currently are still doing quite well. We are in a very bullish territory. We don't expect um, inflation to kick in shortly, but at some point in the year, it may occur. So with that being said, let's just see what are some of the sectors that have been doing really well. So we can scroll down here and uh, I'm just going to go down ETFs, best performing industries. And we we'll click on the view all tab. The first one at the top that's experienced the highest change, 52%, is specialty retailers. And what that means is basically just like any retailer, but instead of carrying a bunch of products, you're focusing on only one. And GameStop is the top game uh, top uh, gainer, 
GameStop, for those who don't know, is basically a video game retailer that's been um, in the news lately uh, due to um, a bunch of investors on Reddit trying to go against Wall Street buying the stock. It was one of the biggest shorted stocks. So basically, lots of uh, um, companies or what do they call them? Um, institutional investors have bet against it, right? So it, this the stock was bound to plummet close to zero. I don't know if it was like at $5 before this whole spiel started, but um, uh, people on Reddit, I think millions of users just bought it and decided to hold it and go against this whole shorting aspect to increase the price of GameStop. And as we're seeing here, it, it went up by 1,979%, which is absolutely insane. Um, so it had gone up a lot and then it dropped quite a bit and now it's back up again to $64. But that's just one company. There's a bunch of others here that if you're interested, you can click on. So that's specialty retail. Second is uranium. Uranium is something that you don't really see too often and uh, with respect in the, in the investment world as a, as a buying opportunity. And the reason we see an increase here is because uh, COVID has impacted the uranium mining and a bunch of other commodities uh, quite, quite significantly. So uh, by closing all these mining facilities, what we see is a reduction in pr production and therefore... Um, uh, less abundant supply of uranium, which drives the prices up. And that's why we're seeing um, this increase in these particular companies that are working on mining of uranium. So we have energy fuels is the top one. It, it went up by 196%. And if you click on it, if you want some ideas of what this company does, click on profile. You can read energy fuels is engaged in conventional and in-situ uranium extraction recovery along with the exploration, permitting, and evaluation of uranium properties in the United States. And if you want to see sort of what is the, uh, the analysis rating for the, the analyst rating, in this case it's a buy, but it's only based on three analysts. If you're considering um, purchasing, for example, this stock, I would recommend looking into uh, uh, more complete uh, websites like Yahoo Finance or MarketBeats to find out uh, more details and then if you click on comments we can see there's a bullish sentiment with 92 percent of the users um basically putting this on a watch list or uh, um, planning on purchasing this in the future so it's looking like there's potential for further rises in the stock price and we can see it's, it's since um second of february it went up quite a bit but it's fluctuating now so that's uranium then we have financial technology, fintech and infrastructure. A few examples here, uh, Marathon, Digital Holdings, Riot Blockchain, Future Holdings. Now, this is basically, um, it's the backbone of virtual work, of, uh, of Bitcoin technologies, of basically everything, all the industries that have gone remotely um, as a result of COVID have benefited, hence, from these types of technologies and that's why we're seeing an increase here, and I expect this to continue in the future. And a lot of the blockchain technology is based on what would fall under here. So we can see Riot blockchain. I want to see if they have any sort of, uh, there's a bully sentiment again. And analysis by, but it's only one analyst rating. Anyways, I just want to just quickly highlight that. And just going down renewable energy. Renewable energy has been doing well for the past uh, few years and I made a video uh, a few months ago on thematic ETFs uh, particularly covering this sector I was expected to do continually do well for this year and the next one as well I think we're moving away from fossil fuels renewable energy sources wind water um, and uh, other types of resources that have less CO2 emissions and uh, the, the sort of electric uh, car revolution where basically we're seeing more and more companies trying to move away from fossil fuels and look for these environmental friendly initiatives. So I think this is a great sector to invest in. Computers and phones, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not surprising, media and publishing. Here we have coal and oil and gas. So more uh, natural resources. Most likely these went up for the same reasons as, as uranium. I know oil and gas, OPEC slash productions once more 
in order to um, to drive the prices up by reducing supply because the price per barrel decreased to, I think like six dollars or even less, which was absolutely insane. And um, they are basically slowly reopening, and some of the refineries were. Um, hit quite hard by COVID and yeah, so they, they, this, I'm, I'm glad to see that the price is going up here. I don't know how for how long, but it's been doing well lately. So anyways, you can take a look at this list and for each one, like I said, you can click on it, see what companies there are, pick a company and then run through some of those um, financial indicators that I've shown you before. So you can click on it and you can chart the Bollinger Bands, the EMA, the RSI, sorry, RSI MACD, and then watch my previous videos on how to take a look and estimate the target price using these metrics. Also, check out Yahoo Finance and MarketBeast to see what institutional investors have to say about these companies. And uh, yeah, I uh, wish you best of luck in uh, investing in some of these sectors that are looking promising now and in the future. Uh, I'm going to end the video with one particular tip if um if interest rates begin to rise and we are seeing um a rise of inflation as well i would um keep in mind that i would like you to keep in mind that certain sectors like the financials for example will do really well while other sectors like the real estate is likely to be impacted quite hard as the cost of borrowing increases. So stay away from real estate in the future if the interest rates uh, will rise. So I hope you found this video informative. Once again, I'm just doing this purely for educational purposes and to help you with your investment news. I am not a licensed investment representative and I wish you a wonderful day and the rest of the week. See you next time. Ciao.